Hello and welcome to another video at the Learn to Code Academy. In this particular video, I'm going to be showing slash walking through a project and media player. So I'm going to shortly go into the video and you should be hearing the music playing. I'll just allow it to play for a little bit. And um, yeah, so this demonstration is more of a proof of concept. Um, the assets and the UI I wouldn't say it's on a professional scope, but it's here to show you how it's done. So without much further ado, let's jump straight into the code. I'm going to be showing this based on the Windows Media um, sort of approach rather than using a third party plugin, which you may be able to see down there called N Audio, which is a very, very, very nice, very useful plugin. I do recommend it. But in this particular example, we'll be using the media, the Windows Media object um, as our sort of the core of this application. So you need to add those dependencies, the media ones. Now, if we scroll down, uh, what we're going to see are some declaration fields. So what you need, well, you don't particularly need it for your example, but over here, I have an image. So I have a sort of cover art for the track that's being played for the, by the media player. And that there is an image. I also have a bitmap image, which will be needed if you want to, as I'm about to show you now, on the XAML page view, if you want to have sort of like the cover art visible on your media player, you're gonna need um, those fields to to show it on your UI. So, oh, I, also one thing that's very important is the bar that is needed for um, you know highlighting where you are in the in the track, so you can you know discreetly select where you want to skip, kind of like on YouTube when you know when you skip ahead, go forward, go back, and stuff like that. You will need that. Uh, it's a time slider control, so you need a time slider control. So that's very important in this particular approach. So feel free to pause the video at any point to um, have a look at what's going on. And um, I will very likely have a link to the source code at, on my Bitbucket so that you can you know, review the code at your leisure and you can study whatever you want to study because I do appreciate that in the video, things might be moving quite fast. So here, um, I'm simply instantiating my image object. I am setting a property, the stretch, to sort of say, you know, stretch the image. This particular line here um, references the assets folder, which I'm using a UWP, the UWP platform to build this application. It's not WPF, it's UWP. Um, and I have more WPF content than UWP, but I want to actually start showing you guys to, you know, how to get more familiar with UWP. So um, in this particular example, go and put your all your image assets and also your audio assets in the assets folder. Again, this is a very simplified example. Um, it assumes that the tracks you want to play are available readily in the assets folder. So it's sort of hard coded in that sense. But what you're going to leave with this video is the approach on using the Windows Media Elements control. So, as the code shows, you want to make a reference to your assets folder with the assets there. In this particular part, um, you want to instantiate your media player. So if we go to the definition, the declaration is right there, private media player media player. So you're going to want to instantiate that in your constructor somewhere. You want to also instantiate the media player element, which is a different class. Don't forget that. Don't Try not to get them mixed up. And you want to instantiate and then assign as shown in the video right now. Now, the next important step is to set your dispatcher timer. So with your dispatcher timer, what you're going to do is, as, as it follows, you're going to instantiate the class. You're going to assign the tick um the tick method and then you can also set the interval so how fast the um the dispatcher time I ticks in this case i believe i've set it to one second so it ticks every second i have a flag there music loaded to indicate if there's music playing and the step frequency which is also quite important which is basically the resolution of the time slider so i've set it to a resolution of one unit and this bar, again, is a dis I disclaim. This is a very simplified example. I've hard-coded the maximum playtime of the track in seconds, like six, rounded up or down. So 
you want to make that dynamic uh, but in this particular example again for the sake of speed I'm not gonna change I haven't changed that uh, it's just a static value so this is one of the main uh, functionalities one of the main um, functions in the program it's what happens every time the dispatcher timer ticks so what you want to do you want to update the visual you want to update the timestamp you also, this this particular part resets the time slider after the track is played through. So after you play the track, it's more of a quality of life sort of functionality, functionality even. Um, the time slider will reset upon the whole track being played. Sort of a quality of life um, UI experience. So you can see the algorithm there, the little piece of code for that particular function as I have approached it. And all of this stuff here, it resets. Let me, yeah, I've actually adjusted the, um, the zoom in a little bit just so you can read it a little bit more better. So reset the seconds timestamp after the minute. So every time you reach a minute in seconds, it will reset the timestamp in the seconds timestamp and then the minute timestamp will increment. One thing to note once again, this is a hard coded. Um, functionality right now as it stands in this particular example again you want to dynamically do this if you are looking at production um, but it you know if you want to kind of make a, a personal media player or if your media player is going to play one particular track or particular tracks that you know it will play you can you know technically hard code the values of the uh, maximum play times as long as you know it, it won't exceed that so yeah so that's the um, functionality the algorithm for um you know keeping the um the timestamps within check again the full source code i'll make available on my bitbucket account which i'll link in the description so you can download the source code and review at your own leisure now um here i have another rather quality of life um, sort of functionality to reset the music as you can see from the code over there um, the, the music resets after a particular position has been reached in the as a track is played and this is a bit of a weird routine I wasn't too sure why I had that functionality there it's, it's actually just a UI update uh, but I, sh I didn't really need to put that in its own function uh, I don't know why I did that I think I meant to do something else ended up changing that but at the end of the day it still works so I kept it as is start timestamp so you can discreetly start the timestamp um, or should I say play the um, the media and then start the dispatcher timer I've also got a pause function for pausing the um, for pausing the player and then stopping the dispatcher timer which is sort of what you would expect Time slider value change. So this is another, this is a UI update. And so depending on the position of the time slider, I have set the functionality to um, update the seconds timestamp. And thus, you know, it will affect the minutes as well because of the way I've programmed the algorithm above as shown uh, earlier. So um, as you would expect, as soon as you skip past 60 seconds, you need to update the timestamp accordingly for the minutes and the seconds. So you have to keep that into account. And that's the functionality there. And just some other various quality of life uh, functionalities. Uh, dragging out of the media player will play the music as soon as you finish dragging the, the time slider. And, and yes, that's basically what it is actually. I tried to cover different um, different scenarios that's why i've got like three different drag instances um, or playing the media player element so in a very brief nutshell that's a media player in uwp um, again the full source code will be linked in the description so that you can download at your own leisure you know you can have a look uh, it will either be bitbucket or on my blog uh, i'll leave a link in the description to my blog or my bitbucket so you can um, look at the source code and um, that's in a nutshell is the application so a little bit of housekeeping it's a uwp application uh, as such I, sh I i would say the ui is a little bit more of a challenge to work with than wpf only because of the the way it's restricted to um, for reactive and responsive resizing of the window. You can't really 
uh, adjust the window size as you as you may please it has a sort of microsoft standard square box kind of um, shape and i didn't really i wasn't too fond of that but you know at the end of the day it kind of standardized all uwp apps so uh, it's a welcome addition i think in the long run so the application is loading now. I didn't add a splash screen. I didn't actually bother with that, but in the assets folder, you can reference a nice splash screen for your media player. And um, as soon as it loads, you will see me running the application once again, just so you can kind of see now with the context of the code, what's actually going on. I have the two buttons for play and pause. The music is playing now. And I have another image, at the cover art image rather, should I say. And that in a nutshell is the application. So this walkthrough was less of a handheld um, sort of experience and more of a general overview. And I hope you found it somewhat informative. The source code, I, I will say once again, will be on either my blog website or on my Bitbucket. So feel free to have a look at that comprehensively, um, to study, to um, you know reference in your own media player or any other kind of functionality that may rely on the media, uh, media control object, the media object for Windows Media uh, functionality. This has been Williams at the Learn to Code Academy. I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned on my blog ldnstudioig.com for more snippets of C Sharp goodness um, that you can benefit in your own applications. Also follow me on LinkedIn. My name is Williams Teddy Jimmo. You can follow me on LinkedIn. You can check out my portfolio and other snippets of my industrial experience and projects as well. So I bid you a good day. If you stuck to the end, thank you very much for watching this video and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.